Good evening, family. God bless you. I am excited to get right to this subject matter tonight about men and rest. You know, society is, is not real kind to men these days. Now, we're going to get to women, but in this, in this, in this message tonight, as, as I was really just looking at men in the Bible and just men in general in society and seeing how so much of society is 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 moving in a way that that women are the new men and and these these things that are coming in there's there's a way that a man who is in rest lives and moves through life versus a man who is not in rest you will begin to see the stark differences as we go along here. So tonight, I think I have about nine points that I'm going to get into that will help you to see a man who, or the traits of a man who is in rest. Now, the first point is this, is that a man who is in rest is in rest. Okay, now I've already shared with you, but I'm going to go, I'm going to take you here to, to, we all know the scripture very well, but it is Psalm 4, verse 8, and I will lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. A man has different requirements for living than a woman does. And so for a man to get to the place of rest, for him, he may already need to be financially secure before he can look at taking care of a woman. He may need to be already secure in who he is to know where he's going. A man without a vision, we may say, is not really a man. And, and so a man is going to be moving forward, getting it done, knowing where he's going, knowing what he's got going on and how to move in that place. Regardless of what's going on around him, a man in rest is in rest. You will begin to see how he lives based upon what is going on all around him. He is in peace. And, and there's something to be said about how Jesus lived on this earth and there really is no better example for us to be examining as as a man in rest than Jesus now you may have other religious ideologies and beliefs and that's that's where you are but when we look at a man in rest and look how Jesus maneuvered through the the days of his life how he moved through society in that time that that places that he went people wanted to kill him people were always trying to touch him people always wanted something from him to test him to berate him they spit on him they did things to him that none of us will ever experience thank God and thank Jesus and there's so much to learn from how he really handled himself in every situation and as we know society is not kind society is not kind at all regardless of of what ethnicity you are what what color your skin is if it is if it is a dark skin it's probably too dark or not dark enough so society would not celebrate that if your skin is white and you're pale well society does not like that either and so there's a new a new way of of how do men really fit into a society that that is not really welcoming them in a way that maybe it once did so as as we're looking at this Jesus brought forth peace. A man that is in a place of rest emulates that. He is bringing peace. And when someone is around or in the presence of someone peaceful, it is very sweet and it's easy to be in the company of a man that is in 
peace. There is a movement and a way that a man in peace lives. Now I'm going to give you the scripture. When we look in the in John, and it's and it's John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in John chapter 14, and it reads us this. Peace, and it's verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. A man in peace has that. He has the peace within him. He is not fussing and fighting with all of the stuff that is in this toxic world. He does not need to be a six-figure man in order to have peace or a millionaire to have peace. Those things are kind of a lie of society that, that speaks that men are only of value by their bank account. Because if you look at the character of a man, the, the man at peace may not have seven figures, but he has a character and integrity and his peace will matter more than a bank account because if you are with a man that's got a bank account and he has no peace then neither will you so a man that has peace walks and exudes himself in the confidence of that he is rested he is able to tackle the day and know that he's taking care of business his heart is not troubled nor afraid this, this is a man that is able to move in a way that other men are not able to be able to move. This man is a man that is healthy. He is not toxic. He does not find the things of toxicity engaging, or, or, nor does he entertain those things. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing because we hear so much in society about toxic masculinity and, and men are so toxic in their toxicity. But that really is never defined. And I believe that that is not defined on purpose. So that way they could put a label on men to make all men toxic. Never mind the amount of toxic women that are all over the place. So when we look at toxic, toxic men or, me, or male toxicity, we have to begin to investigate what that really looks like. What is the difference between a healthy man in rest versus a toxic man? There's a lot of things that are different between the two. A toxic man, we might say, is, is an emotional abuser. He is a verbal abuser, a psychological abuser, even a physical abuser. And, and, it, and he may not even be aware that he is. It is just that society has ingrained that that, that is what being a man or a, 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 a man is. You need to crush beers and, and slam beers and crush them. And whatever men do that are in that ideology, you know, I see it a lot on, on college campuses, but the, the way and things that they talk about, but not to the extent of what, of what a lot of society is pushing masculine toxicity to be. What happens is that a lot of the overly toxic or the toxic men really are hurt. And there's a difference between the hurt and broken man versus a toxic man and a man in rest. A man in rest is healthy. A man that's toxic it has no peace within himself. He is broken, battered. He is mean. He is negative. He does not bring any healing or peace to any situation, he would thrive on destroying it. I'm can't. I'm trying to think of an example of of someone in that in in that arena, but you probably can think of some on on your own. And it's not to come against a person and put that stigma on them, but when we're looking at that type of person, that he gets a thrill out of the destruction of people.
And because he is broken, he is not healthy, we may, we obviously, right? But someone toxic is so far away from rest because he's struggling within himself. And that struggle within himself creates a continuation of toxicity that many might believe, hey, he's the bad boy. He's the bad boy and he may be what, what women want when in actuality they want a man really like Jesus. But because the women are, are accustomed to a toxic man, when they get a man like Christ, they spit him out. So a man that is a man in rest is healthy. He's healthy in his physicality. He is healthy in his thinking. He is healthy in his future. He's, he is healthy and he's established. He is healthy emotionally. He is healthy financially. He is healthy in his relationships. He's healthy within himself in his relationship with the Lord. He has nothing to prove to anyone. Jesus did not have any single thing to prove to anyone. He just did by the questions that he asked. But many people today, by the way that Jesus responded in, in truth, might consider Jesus toxic because they, they are that weak and that intolerant. So the man that is in rest is secure in his masculinity. He would not be overly offended by this or, or that. He's masculine in who he is. And he does not need to crush cars and people to prove his manhood. He recognizes that he is a man regardless of what society says or what society dictates or what society requires, because he is not found in trying to partake in that, because that's where the restless men are. The restless men are always striving and trying to transform themselves to get somebody to like them, but it doesn't matter what they do, because that's not going to work. See, it won't work for, for a woman in rest, because that man who's always trying and trying and trying and striving and striving and striving and striving, he's so restless within himself that a woman wouldn't desire that because he's got to sort himself out. The man who is walking in rest is secure. He is moving in a direction that it doesn't matter his height. It doesn't matter his, as I said, his bank account. It does all of the worldly things are not of the value of the man in rest. Now, he's secure enough to know what needs to be done to get done what needs to be done. He is in rest enough with that. He is a man with a plan, and his identity is going to help him maneuver through everything of this life. Now, in the book of Galatians, I'll show you something. In the book of Galatians chapter 2, we're told this. And you know, a lot of times, a lot of times women emasculate men, but I will tell you this, that a healthy man, that won't happen with, because a healthy man would be respectful enough, but he also has enough boundaries to not allow a woman to derail or destroy him. Most of the time, he would excavate himself out of that toxic situation. So a rest conscious man will do everything he can to stay in rest and move and live in rest. And he would recognize this woman or these people are, are not going to be bringing rest to me, so he would disassociate himself from that environment. Now, in Galatians 2.20, it, it reads this, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life with which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
this man walks in rest and he can walk in rest that God's got this. See, the toxic masculine guy would probably be too inferior to fully rest in the Lord because then he might think that he's perceived as being weak. Even though there is more strength resting in the Lord than falling in the, the prey of this toxicity. So a man in rest is rest securing in, in the word of God. He's resting in his identity and okay with who he is, where he is moving in the direction of his life, knowing that God is. He's not fussing and fighting. He's not, he's not fussing and over all of these things. He is at peace. He is secure in his identity. Now, the other thing too is that his identity, he has walked that journey up to get to that place. He does not need anyone else transforming his identity for him. Why? Because that would not be a man, number one. And number two, it would take him out of rest. See, this is why, this is why when you meet a man in rest, he comes complete with the entire package. Now, you may say, what does that look like? Well, it looks like whatever it looks like. He is an adult male that is walking in rest, living in rest, not in drama, not in all of the things of this world, but moving along in his life, bringing peace just like Christ did, bringing a level of identity, knowing who he is and the standards that he lives by. He's not easily wavered. You could put, you could, you could test, actually tempt this guy, this man with things, and this man would not be tempted by those things. He's not foolish. He's in rest, knowing that he left the foolish ways of how we lived behind, and that those things that somebody would be bringing him foolishness, he would be offended by those things. Because he would think that you think that little of him and that would be offensive to him. He is in rest with who he is. He's confident. He does not need a, a Rolex to, to demonstrate that he's a man or a Movado or a Cartier. He may enjoy those things, but it's not a requirement to display his identity. Mm -mm, not that man. He's in full rest, in complete and a wholeness within himself. Now, what I like about, about this is too, is that his security is found within, not in the things of the world. Although the things of the world are also demonstration of accomplishments that build him to be living and resting in the rest that comes with that. So when I look at, I'll show you, I'll show you who I want to, when I said I couldn't think of anybody. How could I not think of anybody? Let me take you here. Proverbs 31. Look at this. Proverbs 31. I've already taught on the Proverbs 31 man. I love this man because this man is not a joker. This man is not a foul mouth, loose lip, flying off the handle, toxic man. That's not who this who this man is. It says here in 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 verse ten of Proverbs, who who can find a virtuous woman, a virtuous man. But we continue. This is all about her and and what what it's about the Proverbs thirty one woman. However, here's the thing: her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Well, the mouth of a man in rest would be words that bring forth healing, words that are life and not death, words that are appropriate for who he is in his identity. And then, and then it also says here that, <laughs> that he is, he is at the gates. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. So this particular man is moving in a direction where he's fully confident, he is capable, he is he's in rest because it's who he is. 
He's not a game player. He's not moving in any direction that would cause him to be lesser than who he is. Now, if I go into Genesis, I'm going to show you something. What's interesting about Adam and Eve is this, is, is that for Adam and Eve, what's interesting is this, is that God created Adam and, and he, when God created Adam, it's in verse 16 of chapter 2, we said to the, and the Lord God commanded the man, and, and he also, actually that's not the scripture I'm looking for, but he, he gave Adam the command to name all the elements in, that were in creation. Okay, name all the birds and the fish and give names to creation. A man in rest speaks clearly. What's interesting about this is when we see the mindset of Adam, when God created Adam, Adam was in rest, he was in peace. He, God gave him a job, God gave him authority, God gave him extra to give to the woman. God created Adam with every single thing that Adam needed within and without. Adam walked in authority. He had his identity intact. Think about this. So he was he was at peace in his in his positioning and his countenance of who he was. Now, he was in a relationship with God. But Interesting enough is that after Adam and Eve chose and made the choices that they did, God asked, where are you? And he said, oh, we hid because we thought we, thought we were naked. Well, who told you you were naked? After they made their decision, he was at a rest which took her out of rest as well. A man out of rest looks like it. Adam looked different after the fall than before. He lost his position, lost his authority, lost respect. Every single thing of Adam as a man was gone. He, he lost his manhood, gone gone, gone. We can look and see that everything that God had done was undone in an instant. And so from, from this point going forward, for men to be getting to rest, they have to overcome all of the toxicity that is being put forth, sown, brought forth, multiplied, on this earth so that they can get to a place of rest. What men are told makes them valuable today is kind of a funny thing. Work 90 hours a week, have a big bank account, drive a Lamborghini, and... and but does that bring rest? Not necessarily, right? Because rest is within. You cannot arrive at a place you are not aware of. Adam Adam was not aware that he was in rest and that he left it. He forsook everything that he had for the lesser thing. A man in rest has already had the lesser thing and knew that it did not bring rest. The men that are in rest make different decisions than those not in rest. They've learned the lessons. They are not willing to compromise because they know the pain of the lessons. They've learned the lessons. They are not tempted to go and have to repeat the lesson. They may appear to be weak by 
by many who are accustomed to loud mouth, overbearing, rude, obnoxious, toxic men. And so a man in rest is none of that. He might be a little more soft spoken. He may not look like what society says that a man should be. But you know what? He's more than that. Society just isn't capable of seeing that or knowing how to handle that. And so because we are in such a broken society, we don't, we don't know what rest is. We, we don't know how to function in it or how to receive it or how to accept it or how to even see that that's a man in rest. Oh, well, you know, he just doesn't have low energy. No, he has right energy and he's even, he might even have husband energy and he looks out for people because it's who he is. It's his character. Jesus looked out for people. People might say Jesus had low energy. A man in rest has the appropriate energy for where he, for where he is. He's at peace. He, he may be sitting with the Proverbs 31 woman laughing at the days to come because he's made his business dealings. He is partnered with a good woman who is intelligent and knows how to get things done. He makes these decisions that are, that would be calculated for his future and where he's going for the betterment of who he is. He's not a game player. A man in rest is directed. He is purposeful. He is outcomes driven in, in a direction where he's not, he's not weak like King Ahab. He's not easily run over because he's in rest. He moved out of that. He left all of that behind. He is outside the bubble of what society says. He may also appear to be not really noticed, but here's the thing is this. There's a, there's a concept of spot the fake. And, and when you look at, when you look at purses or when you look at antiques and, and spot the fake, there's certain things that, that the fake will be bringing forth that the, that the, um, authentic or genuine won't. So this particular man in rest may be overlooked by many, but yet by those that are there would recognize him because he would stand out to those that know who and what he is. He's a man in rest. Many other men are, are operating in this conscious level here of, all the all the stuff that 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 people are taught they need to be operating in as as a society and this man would not fit that mold he may at one time and he would have grown up he would have grown up to recognize that I don't need to be right and belittle and be and be obnoxious in how I live he may have at one point but here's the thing about this, is that he is given respect. It's not that he walks into a room and busts open the door and announces himself and, oh, I demand respect. He don't need to say anything. Pigs and lions don't need to announce themselves. Well, actually, lions don't. Pigs probably do. But lions never need to announce themselves. They just are. This man, by who he is, is enough. He's fully enough. He does not need to go and demand respect. Why? Because he's not a little boy. He's a man in rest. And when he speaks, he speaks in wisdom. He speaks in kindness. He speaks with respect of others. He is at rest. And the words that come out of his mouth are, are that of life. He is not needing to diminish other people to self-elevate. He is about elevating others because as they elevate, so does he. And there's joy in seeing ele others elevated. He doesn't need to squash people, maybe on the squash court, right? But that's different. That is, that is different. That would be an athletic arena where, yes, there's winning, right? But, but when we look at at people that are in rest, we see this, look, at, look in the political arenas. You can see who's not in rest. It's constant. It's berating. It's, you can feel the countenance of someone not in rest in a particular environment. This man, is, it's who he is. 
And, and so at times, if you are around a man that is at rest, it allows you to just take a deep breath and just be in the peace and the company of that person, of that man. He transforms the atmosphere. He didn't need to say anything. It's, it's the essence of who he is, a spirit in him. He does not need to brag. He does not need to one up. He typically doesn't. He can be silent and it's okay. He, his, his countenance is, is so transformative that the countenance of others in his presence are, is also changed because he brings rest with them, because he brings, brings peace with him, because the words that he speaks, because he's healed and not broken, because he's whole and not half, because he is where he is in his life and the security of where he is in his life. A rest aware man and the traits of this man are traits that, that when men walk in this way and they are loosed from all of the things of what society says, then, then they can be secure in that. This man has healthy relationships. As, as I've shared about where rest conscious people live and getting to a place of rest, his mind is on greater things, not on small minded limiting things. He, he is moving in a way that, that he's secure in whatever it is. He may, he may light a candle. Some women might think that that's funny or weak. He didn't care. He, he, he is, he's in a direction of life that is at total rest and peace. Now, it doesn't mean that he doesn't struggle. See, we oftentimes look at a struggle and make a struggle a lifestyle. This man is not living or making a struggle his lifestyle, and it's not to say he doesn't go through struggles. However, he goes through the struggles knowing that he's already secure in knowing what he needs to do to get things done. He can rest in that. He can rest in what the plan is. He doesn't need to go explode and, and throw tables and punch fists and, and blow stuff up. Now, he may want to blow stuff up just because it's fun. That's a different thing, right? Men are men. Hey, who doesn't like to blow something up or knock something over or hit a head? That's a different thing. I'm, what I'm saying here is that this man is not reactive. He's responsive. Why? Because he's methodical. He's rested. He's, he doesn't, he's already been there. He left that mentality. He moved to a place where everything about what he's cultivated for his life is drama free. He most likely is not a mama's boy. He is a man living in a man's body doing what healthy men do. He can be an encourager and be moving in a direction that is uplifting, that is healthy. He speaks life. He's secure in, in every single thing about his existence. He's at rest. He's not weak. And there's a difference. A lot of times society puts upon men that if you are not this way, that you are weak. Jesus is the epitome, and I've already taught on the traits of Jesus, the man traits of Jesus, and I did that for a reason, because so often society has, a, has an agenda to really destroy things of men, and elevate the toxicity of women in many ways, and then demean it. But that's but and when we're looking at, at these things, when we look at at Jesus as as a man, he 
was gentle, he was kind, he was able to listen, he was not afraid to be a man, he walked in his manhood, he was masculine and not toxic, he was a leader, he was an encourager, he, he, he cherished and cared for women. Many of Jesus' followers and those that supported his ministry were women. He was not a misogynist. Many of the toxicity of men today is extremely misogynist and a lot of women fall in misandry, misandronistic. But Jesus was not a misogynist. He was not a religious zealot that put women in the kitchen as many religious people and zealots go for. He, he was not any of that, you know, because he was at rest and in peace. There's a very different way in which a man at rest lives. And that is to be admired and it is to be commended. And it does not mean that that, that man is, is a wuss or a sissy. It does not mean that, 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 that he is less than because he may not be the loudest one. Jesus didn't need to be the loudest one. So when I really look at, at the traits of, of a, a man in rest... You know, current day, now I can't not remember his name, psychologist out of Canada, and he speaks much about the issues that men, that men go through, and, and as he, as he speaks on these things, what's interesting is that they have tried to take his credentials from him, and as they're wanting to remove him from from the operation of of being a therapist or a counselor they're wanting to take away his practice and he very much is a man in rest helping people he's not loud he can wear a tie he cannot wear a tie a man in rest has nothing to prove not one single thing does this man need to prove to anyone and let me see here I might be able to see what other points I have here in this in this direction it is Jordan Dr. Dr. Peterson now that I can remember it Dr. Jordan Peterson nice man in rest it's in his countenance. It's in it. It's in who he is. He speaks much about Jesus, much about the Lord, but he's secure in his identity and where he's going and what he's doing. So I pray today is, as 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 you hear these words that you begin to see that most of what society has has told us about about rest is a lie. Um, but about about men in rest is also a, a lie to set men up for a downfall that need not be necessary. Society will say that this is only a man if he only does this, this, this. But but those those things that those men do are not demonstrations of a man in, of a man in rest, but a man in restlessness. See, a man in restlessness that's going from this woman to 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 that one to that one to that one. He's he he he's not in rest. He's restless, yes, and he's searching and seeking, and yes, but he's not in the fullness of rest. A man that is in the fullness of rest is in rest and at peace. He's disciplined and self-governing, which means if we go into Ephesians chapter, uh, uh, Galatians 5.22, we know that there's the fruit of the Spirit. This man that is in rest, he governs himself. We may go back to the Proverbs 31 man, that he governs himself. He's at peace in all these areas of his life. He is right on time and on target with where he's going for the plan of his life. He's directed. He's self-governing. He's operating appropriately for who he is, not falling under the dictates of society. He's separate from all of that. So these are the traits of a man in rest. He is rested. He can sleep at night. He brings peace. He speaks words of healing, words of life. He's self-governed. 
He's not toxic. He's healthy. His relationships are healthy. He doesn't compromise. He is secure in his identity. He's able to live and breathe and be who he is because he left what he once was for the greater thing. He speaks clearly. He's, he's Adam before Adam fell because Adam created a, a level of broken consciousness that everybody else is living in, and it appears to be, that, that there was that separation. He's not separated from himself. This man in rest is not separated from himself. He is within himself, in agreement with himself. He's walking in unity with himself, not in conflict with himself. He's not wishy-washy, double-minded in all his ways. He is in, and he's, it, he's in agreement with himself, respecting himself so that others too respect him. He's not inferior. He's none of that. And he transforms environments and atmospheres and countenance of people because it's who he is. He is in rest. The whole world could be falling all around him and he is in, he's got this. He's in rest. Those are the traits so far of what I've seen uh, that has been revealed of a man in rest. And I pray that, that you have the privilege to be in the company of men in rest as well as men to get to that place of rest because it transforms everything. So that's this message for for this this particular part and we'll we'll just pray. Let me just pray because I think there's some things that that uh, I just find is quite fascinating just to begin to see. You'll see you'll start to see. A, a, a lot of things as uh, as as you're moving forward, and you know, as before I go, I can also see like like as we're raising up these these next generations, these these young boys are not being taught anything about rest. That's why they're turning into girls, thinking they're going to have rest. No, they're not. That's going to cause more problems. But we see the unrest in our cities because there aren't enough. There we we need more men in rest that can train up these young men in our cities so that the men have a model. Of, of what that looks like because we, we have cities all around the world that are just uncivilized not in rest but restless our cities are becoming civil uncivilized in restlessness our families are are disheveled all of these things but as men get to that place of rest the families will be transformed communities will be transformed this is why we're going to pray for men to get to this place but also that we begin to see it and not condemn it, but celebrate it. Now we're finished. Father, I thank you today for men. I thank you, Father, for, for moving men from restless to the place of rest. That, that as we all are moving forward, that we can walk in grace and mercy. But I thank you, Father, today that for those that are hearing this, are, are receiving the steps to take, yes, I need to get to this place of rest. Yes, this is me. Yes, yes, yes. Father, I thank you that you were touching the lives of men, that men would be celebrated as they're on their way to rest, that they bring it with them everywhere they go. So we thank you that we can see the difference of a man in rest and a man on his way there. We thank you, Father, for making the way for, for this to be brought forth, for, for triumphs to be, to be victories. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that you just lift off the burden that is, that is so heavy and overwhelming so many men today. We pray today, Father, that you direct them in the direction of rest and peace in their lives so they can live in it for all their days. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and to God be the glory just for what he's revealing for for this series about rest for men and and we'll get to women but just for for men in in this in this time and in this season so you know I want to thank you for being here and I and and I just ask would you if you haven't already just partner with us in in this YouTube arena here as we as we are going forward and and help us to continue to grow this community there's a lot of things that that the Lord is doing 
and every one of these messages my prayer is that it touches and reaches someone's life that they come to a new place of refreshing and rejuvenation in their lives and so please click the like or subscribe button and i will see you as a partner with what it is that we're doing and you can also go to julieblairministries.org there's a lot of stuff that we have going on there that will give you a bigger broader understanding of all of what it is that we're doing in these times if you have a prayer request you can also post that too but i pray you are mightily blessed as you go forward be kind to one another be gracious and just be gentle and praise the lord as you are going forward god bless you all till next time Bye bye